Good evening. They commit violent crimes, but the justice system is allowing them back on the street over and over again. A News 5 investigation uncovered more than half of all officer-involved shootings in Pueblo since 2011 involved criminals who were either on probation or parole. Here's Chief Investigative Reporter Eric Ross. There are more officer-involved shootings in Pueblo today than there was in the last 25 years. Shooting after shooting, Pueblo police officers forced to pull the trigger to save their own lives. How often do you encounter a suspect on the streets who is a convicted felon and possesses a firearm? It's definitely more common than you like to think. I mean, getting a gun on the streets is just as easy as getting drugs on the street. Most of my arrests has literally been repeat offenders. Officer Michael Bellamy has been on the Pueblo Police Force just three years. The 2018 deadly shooting involving career felon Joe Delira Alirez was his second officer-involved shooting incident. <laughs> Officer Bellamy and other officers were responding to a call from Alirez's ex, who told police he was outside her home firing gunshots. Alirez, who was on parole at the time, took police on a high-speed chase and fired at officers. In this last officer-involved shooting that you were involved in, do you think the suspect displayed a gun and started shooting not to harm you but just to get away, or do you really think he had intentions that night of killing officers? Once he got out of the vehicle after the pursuit was over and continued to run and shoot back at officers and stuff, I mean, he pretty much forced our hands to respond accordingly. Body camera video captured officers firing multiple shots, killing Alirez. When he jumped out of the vehicle, obviously it doesn't show him having a gun in his hand, running um, down the street. It doesn't show him, you know, firing back at officers. Um, it doesn't show him on the ground, you know, in a laying on his back like in a fighting stance, um, shooting back. Alirez's criminal history dates back nearly two decades, and with multiple felonies on his record, he should have never been in possession of a gun. Some crimes are enforced a little stricter than others, but when I think it comes to, you know, repeat offenders, uh, dangerous felons and stuff like that in possession of handguns or, you know, firearms in general, I think it definitely needs to be tougher sentences on them. We analyzed every officer involved shooting in Pueblo dating back to 2011 and also looked at each felon's rap sheet. We noticed a pattern where several charges were previously dismissed by the district attorney's office. On occasion, uh, you do plead out cases where you will dismiss a charge against a person in addition to, uh, to getting the higher ch uh, conviction on the higher charge. For example, if someone is charged with armed robbery and two misdemeanors, District Attorney Jeff Chosner says it wouldn't be unusual for a prosecutor to dismiss the misdemeanor charges in exchange for an armed robbery guilty plea. This saves taxpayer money in the long run while obtaining a conviction. But a conviction doesn't always keep someone behind bars. There's a lot of moving parts to the criminal justice system. So we could get a conviction in court uh, and that individual is then turned over to the Department of, of Corrections, maybe put on parole, maybe in probation, um, and they make their own independent decision as to whether this person would be worthy of being released to the public or not based on the various criteria that they have to comply with. It's almost like a revolving door. It, it is very frustrating, I can tell you that, where we go to, we go to trial, we have all the hard work associated with that, we get a, a conviction, we get what we think is an appropriate sentence, and then one of these other agencies um, releases the, per, the people back out on the street and they commit a subsequent crime. Chosner says his office is committed to prosecuting felons, and he has the numbers to prove it. We have filed 25% more felonies in 2018 than we did in 17, and we filed 20 more percent more felonies in 17 than we did in 16. So we've taken a very proactive, aggressive approach to, to criminal justice and getting these cases through the system. I gotta be honest here, you're saying you're a strong supporter for keeping these bad felons locked up, but the Department of Corrections has made a push in recent years to get people out of jails and out of the criminal system and back on the streets. So to the public watching this, it seems like nobody's on the same page. And I agree with you. I think there is a push at those various institutions to put people back out on the street again. Um, 
to some extent there is there is jail overcrowding and I think there should be a look at at jail reform as to who should go to jail and who shouldn't um, but the public needs to understand that that philosophy also has its consequences which is that it can in, in, increase the incidence of repeat offenders. And officers on the streets have taken notice of the problem. Do you ever make an arrest and then three days later or a week later see that same person back on the street? Yes, it's a constant thing. Um, it's frustrating because you would think they would get held longer or whatever the case may be, but um, it seems like it's just a never ending cycle. We work hard to try and make the community safe and they're out like I said, within a few days, if not a 24-hour time span, they're back on the streets for whatever reason. The issue is, can we keep them off the streets so that average folks don't have to worry about home break-ins and car thefts and assaults and that sort of thing? So what's the solution? Well, it's going to have to be solved by lawmakers. For one, a recent change in state law means people who commit class five and six felonies no longer go to prison, and that includes parole violations. Instead, those felons serve their sentence in county jail, but with overcrowding, they often get released early. The second issue is looking into how proactive the Department of Parole is at going after violent felons who violate the terms of their parole. Now there is a lot more to come with this story and you can count on News 5 Investigates to keep you informed and up to date every step of the way. Watching out for you, Eric Ross, News 5 Investigates.